A summer tradition unlike any other in Northern California, where wine country meets the roaring engines of NASCAR on the unique road course of Sonoma Raceway. It's the Toyota Save Mark 350, and the preview show starts now. And welcome to a special edition of Fox 40 Sports. I'm Mark Dembski, and it may be hard to believe, but Sonoma Raceway is celebrating 50 years of racing, and there will be no bigger celebration than at this year's Toyota Save Mart 350. From stock cars to Indy cars to NASCAR in 1989, this one of a kind road course really has seen it all. It's the destination track. 50 years of road course racing at Sonoma. From stock cars to dragsters, motorcycles to open wheel racing, the reputation of this gem tucked neatly into the hillsides of wine country changes from driver to driver. You had to push hard in certain areas but have a lot of finesse and, and patience in, in others. I just remember how much fun it was when you complete a lap at Sonoma and you thought you did it well. It's, it's an accomplishment. Everything is so different than your norm that it's almost like a vacation for everybody in the garage area. How primitive this place was though, 50 years ago. We broke ground here in August. It was just a hill with cows and an occasional mountain lion. And that, that is a true story. That's all there was here. A group of business people from Marin County who also were racing enthusiasts got the ball rolling. The first 20 years at Sonoma were active with drag racing, motorcycles, and NASCAR's late model and West series. But the road course was missing a major headliner. I went there in 1987. Uh, we shot a, an Exxon motor oil commercial there and we thought, wow, this would be a cool place to have a cup race. And it wouldn't be long before it became a reality. The next year, Riverside Raceway in Southern California was sold and announced it would be closing, leaving NASCAR's Cup Series needing to find another venue. Their answer? Wine Country in Sonoma, which hosted its first Cup race in 1989. It's a really racy racetrack. You can really race hard on it. Road racing was, uh, there were only a few guys that were pretty good at it. And the biggest issue you had when you went to road courses back in the day was the equipment wasn't that good. And there were other issues with bringing racing's biggest series to Sonoma. Number one, the facility experience was miserable. We didn't have garages. The, the teams had to work out of the back of their trucks. Um, very rough. Sonoma Raceway President Steve Page took over just after the Cup Series arrived. His vision proved to be as important as bringing the Cup Series here in the first place. Facility's a little rough, but maybe we can build something here. And it, it, it was truly a diamond in the rough at that time. He came up here into this famed wine country, and he made friends of the old vineyard owners and winery owners, and that needed to happen. They weren't really excited about having this racetrack here. Today, he's a pretty highly respected guy up in this part of the world. Grandstands were carved out right into the hillsides that surrounded the racetrack. State-of-the-art garages and a media center were also built. The entire fan experience was reborn into what it is today at Sonoma. If you flash forward 25 years, now we've got a beautiful facility that, that really offers a professional experience. And don't just take our word for it. I think everything that they do after they put on such a great show. That trip in the middle of June out to Sonoma, that's the best weekend that I think we have that kicks off our summer months. Did you know, since 1989, 19 different drivers have been to Victory Lane at Sonoma? Vallejo's own Jeff Gordon, of course, has had the most success at the track, winning five times from 98 to 2000, then again in 04 and 06. Tony Stewart won three times there in 01, 05, and 2016. Five other drivers have won twice at Sonoma. Well, if you haven't heard already, this year the race has a new twist, literally with the return 
of the carousel, a staple at Sonoma Raceway until 1997. The 12 turn two and a half mile road course is back for this year's Toyota Save Mart 350 to commemorate 50 years at the track. I spoke with drivers to get their thoughts on the return of the carousel. For years, the Sonoma Road Course was defined by a winding five-point turn known as the carousel. The famous twisting stretch has been the site of many of the race's memorable moments, including the intimidator Dale Earnhardt's pass of Mark Martin in 1995 for his first and only NASCAR Road Course victory. But it's also the place where many of the sport's best drivers couldn't win. I liked it. I love the challenge of it. I never had a chance to win uh, with, uh, under the carousel. Um, but I think that what it does is it brings a, a, a totally unique dynamic to the racetrack where you're going to see those that really can road race. The carousel's return to Sonoma will also impact fuel strategy. Anybody that that's wins there is stretching it really, really tight on fuel. That's going to play a role in that. Um, that racetrack being that much longer will play a huge role in the fuel mileage game. The shape of that corner is, is it's a little bit different than, than what it has been for us in the past. So uh, there will be some things and, and that you have to go through that uh, are quite a bit different than, than what we've done in the past on that end of the racetrack. The carousel really adds a whole new dimension to that track. Uh, the big problem we had when we started racing there in the 80s was our brakes. What well, we've done so fast, we got great braking, got great steering, a lot better handling cars, much safer cars. So with the carousel now put in the, into play, it's really going to make it a lot of fun for the race fan. So here's literally where the NASCAR race this season takes a turn for the better. The cars, instead of going straight as in years past, you see will make a sweeping hard right hand turn before picking up some speed heading towards a straightaway. Man, I'm the oldest guy on the circuit as far as starts, and I've never raced the carousel. So I'm really looking forward to coming over turn 3A, dropping down that hill, and then having that hard right to cut into the infield section, and then do that long left-hander called the carousel, and then back up the drag strip towards crazy turn seven. So turn seven was wild before, that's where you want to be now to watch all the craziness that's going to happen. It's perfect. It's exactly what they should be doing. It's harder, and that means it's going to be more, more fun for us fans to watch. Those guys trying to negotiate that sweeping left-hander around and down the hill and down the drag strip toward the, the top of the track. So I'm happy. I think it's going to be cool to watch. Can't wait. Here now, a closer look at what exactly the drivers will be in for at this year's Toyota Save Mart 350 at Sonoma Raceway. The carousel expands the track to 12 turns, totaling 2.52 miles per lap. It plunges from turn four down turns five and six. Then the drivers will have to navigate a 200 degree turn before dropping into the longest straightaway on the course, turn seven and the hairpin. Coming up, fresh off the move to Joe Gibbs Racing, we talk to defending Toyota Save Mart 350 champ Martin Truex Jr. as he looks for win number three at Sonoma. He can coast from here. He can, but today he's going to get the checkered flag. Martin Truex Jr., a winner at Sonoma. Martin Truex. Well, it's certainly a good time to be Martin Truex Jr., the defending Toyota Save Mart 350 champ, won the 2017 Cup Series championship and barely missed out on winning it all again last year with Furniture Row Racing. Now Truex and his crew chief, Cole Pern, they moved to Joe Gibbs Racing, joining Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. Of course, joining JGR can certainly be an adjustment, but Martin Truex Jr. and Cole Pern have raced in connection with JGR through Furniture Row Racing and Toyota Racing. The dynamic duo off to a great start this season already, having found victory lane on multiple occasions. They look now to continue their magic at the Toyota Save Mart 350 and join Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart as the only drivers to win at least three races at Sonoma. Stage 
Trucks. Four points going to Mark Trucks Jr. as he wins in Kentucky. 2018 proved to be a bittersweet season for Martin Truex Jr. and his crew chief, Cole Pern. After missing their chance for a second straight Monster Energy NASCAR Cup championship by just five points, their driving team, Furniture Row Racing, shut its doors for good. Fortunately though, Joe Gibbs Racing picked up both Truex and Pern. I can't even tell you how much harder it would be, with, it would be without him making this move, makes the decisions and uh, does, you know, did a great job building a great team. I think any, anybody on our team really wanted to do anything different. We, uh, you know, we came really close to going back to back championships uh, the last two years and wanted to kind of keep that going and you know it's hard to get good chemistry in the sport and when you have it you want to keep it. The move to JGR isn't too out of the ordinary though as Truex and Pern will still be driving with Toyota. Martin is a, is a great story for Toyota and it's, it's really a personal story because of course we, um, we got to know Martin when he was racing for Michael Waltrip Racing and, uh, and that didn't end well, certainly didn't end like we envisioned it. So to have him you know, in the, in, the, in the mothership that Joe Gibbs Racing is huge. And now Truex is teammates with some of NASCAR's biggest drivers, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin and Eric Jones forming a possible dream team behind the wheel. Of course, you welcome in Martin Truex Jr. as a new teammate now at JGR. How has that relationship played out for you guys? It was a no-brainer. It made total sense to bring him back into the fold, keep him at the Toyota side, and keep him within uh, the Joe Gibbs Racing family to make sure that we can go out there and have a powerhouse team. It's great having Martin and Cole uh, you know, at the shop now. They've always kind of been teammates of ours for the last couple of seasons, but to really have them in our shop and seeing how they work and operate, uh, there's a lot to the, that can be learned from that. I think they're going to help our whole program. Obviously, Martin's a, a great driver and Cole's a great crew chief, so it's, uh, it's good. I mean, for me to have three veteran guys to, to lean on, you know, with uh, only a couple years of experience on my end, it's nice to have them to go to. Truex will now turn his attention to Sonoma, where he's had previous success, winning in both 2013 and last season in 2018. A win this year, though, would put him in the company of Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart as the only drivers with three or more wins in wine country. You know, Sonoma being probably one of the toughest road courses in the country, to win there twice has been uh, has been amazing, and the fact that we probably, you know, have been the guy to beat there the last three or four seasons every every single time has been pretty awesome. We'll find out if Truex can add to his win total at Sonoma on June 23rd. So far, he has the win in 2013 with Michael Waltrip Racing, and of course last year with Furniture Row. And I don't think you want to bet against him this year either. Six top five in his 11th road course race. He's going to win on a road course. Johnson wins. He ran him down quickly once he got within sight. Now Kyle Larson wins a million dollars. California has always represented well in the sport of NASCAR with legends like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and Kevin Harvick. The sport will always be strong rooted in the Golden State. But now another group of young drivers has emerged to take the torch into a new era. That was incredible. I mean, such an honor. Earlier this year, when NASCAR legend Jeff Gordon was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he chose fellow driver and Northern California native Kyle Larson to do the honor. Jeff Gordon was somebody that, you know, I looked up to. I don't ever say I had a hero, but like he was the number one guy that I rooted for in NASCAR just because, you know, we grew up similar areas. You know, I'm definitely a big Kyle Larson fan. Of course, uh, him being from Elk Grove, me being from Vallejo. I, I kind of followed his path, so you know, for me to be able to uh, introduce him uh, at the Hall of Fame was, was awesome, something that uh, I'll cherish forever. At age 26, Larson is one of the up-and-coming cup drivers who has tasted a decent amount of success early on in his career as NASCAR transitions to a new era of drivers. I don't know, there's, there's definitely a, a handful of us that I feel like are need to be in control of, of helping to grow the sport and um, we each have our own kind of unique personalities and traits that that we can each bring to help you know try and grow the sport we've got some incredibly great new young faces that are going to take those drivers place uh, you don't fill the shoes you just fill in and move on Grass Valley native Matt Di Benedetto, driver of the 95 Toyota for Levine Family Racing, 
took over for the retired Casey Kane this season. Di Benedetto remembers coming to Sonoma for NASCAR weekend as a fan, thinking one day it could be him behind the wheel of a stock car. I thought it was the coolest thing, getting to see all the cars running around there and, and um, dreamed of one day racing on the big track. And now this opportunity will hopefully will go out there and shock some people. Haley Deegan is going to win the race! Third race tonight. One driver still in NASCAR's minor leagues, but who is gaining a ton of attention is 17-year-old Haley Deegan from Temecula. Deegan has already captured a pair of wins on NASCAR's k and Pro Series West and is well ahead of the curve set by her and her team. So much so that Deegan is branching out now, already committing to a handful of ARCA races this season. Doing these things, winning races, it's helping the goal come quicker and helping these opportunities like racing ARCA, maybe trucks in the future, Xfinity, stuff like that. It makes those things happen quicker and more prepared for them. She's, she's got passion and determination. And when you put all those things together and the opportunity, she's given some great opportunities. Score one for the ladies. Haley Deegan wins in Meridian. You know, the sport's hungry for a, a female driver, a successful female driver. Danica did a great job, at, you know, on at different times. And so we're always looking for, the, for the, the next young lady that can step into one of these cars and be competitive. Haley Deegan, Matt DiBenedetto, and Kyle Larson, three California drivers on the cusp of NASCAR greatness. Still ahead, we hear from our friends at Fox Sports as they break down how the new rules package will affect the upcoming Toyota Save Mart 350. In a word or two, what do you think of Sonoma Raceway? Good time. I mean, that's, you, you can't say any better than that. It's a good time for everybody. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I would say slick and technical. Easy right. for me, you know, it's, it's just one, it's one of the toughest places we go on the schedule by far. Challenging, very challenging, um, difficult, very difficult. Slick, uh, very, very slick. Sonoma is, is just notorious for tearing the retires off the car and, the driver that can find the best setup or the best throttle control with the right foot uh, really, really has the best day. Choppy. It's a weird word to use to describe it, but the road course is super technical and very like low speed choppy and you're stuck together and it's fun. Thrilling. Finesse and what they call point and shoot. Get through one corner, shoot to the next. Very technical. There's so many little nuances about that place that you've got to be very technical with, and it's the braking points, it's your throttle acceleration, it's the throttle application, how not spin the tires, how much do you spin the tires. Obviously, the, more, the harder you are on the tires, the more you're going to fall off in the runs, and how Martin and some of those guys are so good at being able to just drive their car and drive away, sometimes it's, uh, it makes you wonder. It's just crazy fun. <laughs> it's crazy fun, man. That's all you can say about it. When you check out the Toyota Sabar 350 at Sonoma Raceway, you'll find that there are some new rules in place. This was part, of course, of the 2019 rules package that debuted at the start of the season. Specifically, the front splitter now has a two inch overhang and both the rear spoiler and the radiator both have new configurations. Not unexpected, the new rule changes haven't been without some controversy as teams are already frustrated. We send it now to our NASCAR on Fox crew to break it all down and hear their thoughts on the return of the carousel to Sonoma. It's a great time of year in NASCAR. We are set for our first road course race of 2019, a return trip to Sonoma. We all agree. It's one of the great venues that we go to all season long. But this year, a little bit of a new twist for drivers and teams, Jeff. Going old school. Uh, I got a chance to race at Sonoma on this uh, configuration, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's going to bring a whole new dimension and challenge to the drivers. And, and I think the road racers that are comfortable are going to really uh, uh, have a bit of an advantage now because uh, the carousel, there's there's heavy braking into there. There's in the 
now turned seven. A, a big breaking passing zone. I think it's also going to make the race uh, even more entertaining than it already is. So I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, I am too. I, I love that layout. And when they went away from it, I was actually kind of sad because there's so many more things that it brings into the circuit. And I, and I think it's more of a I would call a legitimate road course. When you have all that other stuff and the character that it brings, I'm really excited about this new layout. I, I love road racing myself and, and never got a chance to run that course. So I'm jealous this year. When we go out there for NASCAR on Fox and we're not, not able to be on the racetrack, I'm going to be insanely jealous of those guys. You talk about the technical aspects of the racetrack and the challenges that brings. We've also got a new set of rules, and that'll be the first time on a road course with those set of rules. What's that do for them? Yeah, they're going to have more downforce, but it's, a, it's still a relatively low-speed racetrack. So the aerodynamics are not going to be as dominant there. It is going to be a different thing, though. They're going to be stuck a little bit better. And like I said, with the new layout and the, and the more left-hand turns, you, also, you still have the right-hand turns, but you know, with the left-hand turns in there, I think One it's going to be One thing I feel very confident about, there's going to be a new track record. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. we haven't run on this track, what, since 1994, I think? Uh, so I think it was 95. Was, I was, was Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s crew chief, and we won that race and passed Mark Martin in that carousel. So I'm glad to see it come back. I, I was right behind you, by the way. I remember <laughs> you got, you got a good it. seat for that one. View of it. <laughs> you both have great memories there because you've won there. Regan and I have great memories there because it's, it's wine country. Okay, we're looking <laughs> forward remember? to it. The 31st <laughs> trip to Sonoma for NASCAR teams, and we can't wait. Still ahead, we get you ready for race weekend here in Sonoma. Everything you need to know for the upcoming Toyota Save Mart 350. Here now, a rundown of all that is happening on NASCAR weekend here in Northern California, beginning, of course, with the annual Hauler Parade on Thursday, June 20th, around Capitol Mall here in Sacramento. Then on Friday, a pair of NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series practice sessions at Sonoma. Saturday, of course, is cup qualifying in the morning, followed by a kid's autograph session in the paddock area. And then Saturday afternoon is the NASCAR Pro Series West race at Sonoma. And then, of course, right on Sunday, all the pre-race festivities begin about 10 in the morning. That includes an air show. And then shortly after 12 noon, they will drop the green flag on the Toyota Save Mart 350. And keep in mind, if you're not coming to the track that day, you can always watch the race on Fox Sports 1. And with that, well, we've reached the finish line. On behalf of Fox 40 and Sonoma Raceway, I'm Mark Dembski, and we'll see you in Sonoma at the Toyota Save Mart 350.